Yes, that was a, a very nice introduction. Sorry for the abbreviations. FNAF stands for Five Nights at Freddy's. And uh, as you all know, I will be using this quite a lot in this talk today. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to thank the awesome uh, DevGam staff for having me here today. And uh, they take very well care of us. The lasagna was indeed extremely good. <laughs> so that maybe that might be the reason that there's not that many people in the room, but um, that's okay. <laughs> so during the talk, uh, please feel free if you have a question or on something, even during the talk, don't wait QA. Uh, uh, I want this to be like an interactive session so we can all participate. So a bit about myself. So my name is Kathleen Evers. I'm VP at Pingle Game Studio. And um, so today we're going to talk about uh, the porting that we did for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Break to Nintendo Switch from Unreal Engine. So I will start with uh, some global insights, a bit about Pingle, a bit about uh, FNAF, the franchise, and also a bit about um, uh, the, the Nintendo Switch uh, device itself. So. For starters, a bit about Pingle Game Studio. So we are a studio that was founded in 2007 already, which makes it quite sustainable this time of, you know, uh, because we have been around for almost 17 years, and you all know the st status of the industry today, it is quite sustainable to be, still be around. So uh, we have 400 people, uh, all based in Ukraine, except for me and uh, our other um, uh, US facilities. So three offices. Uh, the fourth one we had to shut down because of the war. Obviously, it's a, it's a quite critical situation as well. Uh, but we, we work our way through it. So we participated in bringing to life more than 100 games on several platforms on PS4, 5, Xbox, MetaQuest, and uh, we helped a lot of partners developing uh, with their developing needs, actually. So um, I myself am based in France, on the west coast of France, which, which, is, which is actually kind of nice. We also have our VP colleague in Seattle, and he is a former Nintendo guy, actually. And so um, we also rely on several advisors throughout the world. So we have a very good advisor from former PlayStation uh, in the UK, and we also have um, Simon, who is our advisor in China which is very helpful when you go do some shows like China Joy or Tokyo Game Show in Asia. It's not always easy to get in that market, but thanks to our advisors, we manage that quite well. So I think you've all heard about FNAF, Fright Night Security, uh, Fright Nights of Freddy's, right? So um, the franchise has been developed by Steel Wool Studios, and that is also a US-based uh, US company in Oakland, California. And, um, so they're not only so the, the company was formed by really veterans of the industry like uh, HTC Telltale Telltale Games, sorry, and uh, they're not only experts in game development but also in everything that is um, a VR therapy related. They have been working on this game in collaboration with Devoted Studios, who is also based in the U.S. And um, so we, we work, they worked together with them, and they trusted us with the porting of the game from Unreal to Nintendo Switch. So, of course, I'm not going to you know, hang around long on this slide because everybody knows that FNAF is a horror game. It's an indie development game. It has been started, the creation has started by Scott Carlson in 2014 already. So that makes it 10 years of a franchise. And um, uh, who has played the game, actually? Oh, yo, great. Okay, you're still alive. That's good. You didn't have a heart attack. <laughs> so, uh, so you... For those who haven't played, uh, in most of the franchises, you play the role as um, uh, a knight employee, and you have to work your, well, there's a lot of stuff you have to do. You have to defend yourself against uh, the, 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 the creatures that come alive and become very hostile at night. So um, you, have to, uh, you have to work on, we have to sol solve mini games, Easter eggs, etc., etc., and up, and that way you can go to the end of the game. 
So as of now, we have nine games, uh, standalone games of the franchise. We have some spin-offs. And last year, there was a movie released in 2023, so that was actually very successful, I mean, in terms of box office, because it made, as you can see, two, almost $300 million dollars with a very small budget of only $20 million. And uh, the thing is that the, the, the movie was actually not that very well received, Uh, but that is actually not new. When, when a game has been ported to uh, a movie, obviously sometimes you know, the critics aren't very good. The same happened with Assassin's Creed, for example. Uh, that came out in 2016 and also made a lot of money on the box office, but uh, wasn't very well received by the, by the critics either. But sometimes you know, it can happen that uh, the fans of the franchise are really into their Uh, uh, into their franchise, into their IP, and they don't like it very much. It's like when you read a book, and then when you go to the movies, and it's like, oh, the book was way better. It's, it's kind of the same thing here, right? Um, so yes, a bit about Nintendo Switch. So as you know, uh, Nintendo Switch is the first console that comes to mind when we, when we speak about portable consoles. Uh, of course, there is Steam Deck, the Asus One, but still, I mean, uh, 114 million active users over the world, that's a lot. Um, for example, who has a Steam Deck? Yay, two. <laughs> Do you also own a Switch? Yes, of course. <laughs> And uh, so who has a Switch? There you go, see? Switch is so... I, I do too, by the way. Uh, so one of my favorite games, by the way, is one of the original IPs, and that's Legend of Zelda. I can play hours of Zelda. Obviously, there's also very successful portings, Doom, uh, Witcher 3, what else? Cuphead. Oh, yeah, Cuphead is also a very nice one. I like to play that a lot as well. So... Um, uh, now that the rumors of Switch 2 consoles is on everybody's mind, Uh, I mean, who would buy the Switch 2 for those who already have one, if it comes out? <laughs> I would definitely... Yeah, no, you're not sure? You're hesitating? Yeah, but, yeah, but I, think, I think you are right to wait a little bit, because we don't know much about the Switch 2 already, as of now. Uh, I was in DICE two weeks ago, and literally everybody was talking about Switch, Switch 2. Have you heard? Do you hear, have you heard about Nintendo? What are the news? Is it coming out this year? It's going to be announced at GDC or not? So it's, everybody is like, mm, waiting a little bit. But Nintendo is very good at hiding or just you know, choose a random Thursday to, to, to do the announcement of the game, of the, of the console, right? So, even though um, the Switch console is very, very uh, popular, it still has very, very hard limitations, hardware limitations. For example, the storage. I don't have, this is actually not updated, but the storage on, on Switch is actually less than most of the mobile phones that we use today. The console came out in 2017, so we had made a lot of progress since then, right? There's also uh, the graphic problem. It is actually a very, very small screen, and uh, it's only an NVIDIA uh, GM, GM20? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I had to remember that. But, um, but yeah, so that makes it also very complicated when you come from a, from a big franchise like, uh, like uh, FNAF on PC or on, on consoles to put that into this little, little nano console, as to say. And also, Switch uses HDD and not SSD because uh, so, and this makes it even harder to optimize the game, right? SSDs are really more compact, are very more lighter, and are not very um, memory uh, consuming. So this, these three reasons are actually the main reasons why often publishers or studios come to us as an outsourcing company because they don't have always the knowledge or the know-how how to do the optimization from uh, PC to, uh, to, to Switch, well, from any other platform for that matter. So that is why Steel and Devoted um, trusted us to make this um, porting happen, and we were really, really happy with that. So, a bit about Pingle and its expertise on Switch. So we have been collaborating on more than 30 games that we brought to life uh, on Switch. All genres, 
uh, from going from lawn mowing simulator uh, to uh, AAA titles or even like games like Straight Lights or uh, My Time at Porsche, et cetera, et cetera. So we are really quite skilled when it comes to porting to Switch. And, um, and yeah, and so, um, but what you actually need to bear in mind is that every single project on Switch is a unique adventure. It's something that is really related to the game. Uh, the game can have several uh, levels where the UI and UX need to be adapted specifically to Switch because it's sometimes it's, it can be challenging. And uh, therefore, you have to realize, actually, before you go deep dive into the, into the work, to do complete research on the code and what may be the problems that you will have to overcome and the hurdles that you need to resolve when you are working on the porting of the game. So, when we started, actually, uh, oops, sorry for that. <laughs> when we started um, uh, working on the game, and once we understood the scope of it, we started to bring together a, a specific team, and we ended up with uh, 27 people. And in that, in that group of people, uh, there were you know, C++ coders, Unreal Engine coders, QA, UI, UX, sound, light, everything that you have to have when you do uh, a game, right? So, um, there was also obviously a, a project manager and a biz dev manager that led the team towards you know, the end of the seven month journey that we had in porting the game. And if you end the game, <laughs> and again, if you are still alive because it's so scary, you can see here in the credentials the names of uh, the people that have worked on uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Break from Pingle Game Studio. All right. So, obviously, um, after we did the research on the code, we realized that we had a lot of challenges that we had to overcome during that uh, pe period of seven months and during the um, optimization of the games and of the game. That was actually the first one. The first challenge was the optimization. Also, the hard references technology was one of those, light and sound, and we also will have to have creative solutions. So these are the five main challenges that we had, and I'm going to tell you about all of them and how we resolved those problems. So the first one and the most uh, important, not the most important one, they're equally important, I think, is the, is the general optimization of the game. Obviously, when you have a game on PC or on PS, uh, well, it, it's, it's obviously completely different than what you, what you want to have on Switch, right? So um, we used for that the beautiful corner approach, and that is actually an approach where you take, uh, you know, a piece of the game and then uh, you analyze the visual quality and bring it down to the lowest visual quality that you can permit yourself. Um, once that's done, you decompress the, the textures and you replace the most res resource-consuming ones into less resource-consuming ones. And then you repeat it just in iterations. So this was actually uh, what we had to target and what we had to um, nail down, as to say, with Steel Wool and Devoted, what, what, what they wanted to have the game to look like in the end. So every single week we had several calls with them. There was a, a Slack, Slack channel dedicated to that. The whole team, uh, whenever there was a, a doubt or someone had questions, it was immediately pushed through uh, the Slack channel and we had answers immediately from, um, from Devoted and from uh, Steel Wool Studios, of course. But it is very important that everybody is on the same line, right? If you don't have the... the, the if, if you don't have scaled the, 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 the right direction you are going, uh, given by, by, by the studio itself, you will go astray, and so therefore those calls, many, many calls uh, during the whole process is very important. Um, yeah, and of course, this helped us actually uh, going into the right direction uh, when we talk about visual quality. So, the second challenge that we had to overcome was the hard reference technology. So hard reference technology is something in the code where, who is a coder here in the room? Do we have an Unreal one? Okay. An Unreal, oh, sorry. <laughs> do you do Unreal coding? 
Yes? Can you explain maybe what is hard reference technology? So you have a building and a texture assigned to it. And with hard references, uh, when you want this building on the scene, uh, it like grabs the texture with it. And if it needs something else, it grabs everything with it. And it has to like go there in bulk. Right. And that takes a lot of memory, a lot of time. And it's OK for PC projects, because it's like not a problem there. But if you have HDD instead of H uh, SSD, it like unacceptable. There you go. Now he's going to do my talk in my place. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So that is what we did. Uh, what the tech, what the tech guys did. So they spotted all the, 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 the places where the hard reference technology was used, and then turned it into a uh, uh, soft, uh, yeah, in, in, into soft references. So actually, what happens as you really quite well, very well explained, is that, <laughs> is that if, you, if you take away the hard reference, the, the code won't compile anymore. So you're in trouble. <laughs> so that is what we did uh, for, the, for the HR technology. And that is obviously not built for, switch, uh, for the Switch pop, uh, platform. So yeah, so we created a completely new pipeline for uh, the, the, the uploading of the, of the elements within the code. And, uh, and that was also you know, a great chunk of work for the, for the developers. Uh, they did it together with the C++ and the Unreal guys. So they put their heads together and uh, make, made it happen. All right, so um, wait. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so the, the third one uh, was the, the light optimization. So uh, light uploading was also very, very uh, memory uh, demanding. And uh, we solved it by rebaking the light. So this technology you know, um, makes it possible, actually, to, to calculate um, the use of the of the of the effects, for example, like illumination or shadows, and that stored that information in a special uh, in a separate texture, and then um, and then the second thing that we did also was uh, quite not not really simple, but we transformed the dynamic lightning into static lightning. For example, if if you on PS, if you have for a, ha a lamp that is hanging and switching like this, it's dynamic. On switch, it will look like static. So uh, way less um, energy confu uh, confusing, <laughs> consuming. Sorry. And um, so yeah. So the thing is that actually for light optimization, as of the other challenge that we have, you have to include this also in every single project. It's not only uh, related to uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, oops, sorry. Another one, sound optimization. This one is also very important, and uh, because you know, sound you never underestimate the the, the, the importance of sound. <laughs> so it's uh, it's actually one of this was our fourth challenge, and um, so we developed and applied a specific we wise. Um, uh, code that we integrated into the game and optimized the sound with way less, you know, um, sound banks that were way, you know, lighter than the normal sound banks um, that you can use in Unreal Engine. So yeah, uh, the the sound design team did a very very good job on this one, and replaced also the CPU sensitive uh, ones with way more simpler ones. Of course, you won't have the same result as on PS4 or on, or on Xbox, but uh, well, actually, the players don't really really mind as long as you you know uh, the, the the end goal is respected, and that is actually um, you know get the player's satisfaction and, and be sure that they're scared as hell <laughs> while playing the game, even on Switch. It happened to me. <laughs> and um, so the next challenge was actually um, related to a specific level in the game. And uh, so this, this level, so we had to adapt the UI of this level specifically to Switch because it had many, many in-game screens and um, those in-game in screens had a lot of animated uh, images on them, 
which actually overloaded the device, of course, and again was way more, way too, too much uh, energy con consuming and uh, memory consuming as well. So we resolved this by actually uh, just decreasing the frame rate uh, of these objects, and then uh, once the, the frame rate was de de decreased, we increased the quality of the images that we used. So you would still have like an aesthetic and actually um, a very stylish layout on Switch itself. Um, yeah, so this actually was a solution that need, needed to come up within the creative team of the, of the, of the 27 people that we saw. And uh, because we had to adapt the whole level specifically to switch. So you would, and this level looks completely different than it does on PC and on Xbox, for example. So now that we have had the five challenges and overcome them, so we can uh, you know, now uh, give you some useful advice for those who are you know, counting on porting the game to Switch from Unreal or from Unity. This is really specific to, uh, to Switch itself as a platform. Sound. Sound is really key to have a lighter file and, um, and not to overlight your game. The second one, uh, the second one is actually uh, the creative um, uh, advice or tip: don't be afraid to be creative, like we did in the the, the level with the in-game screens. So. Um, the, you know, a game can look completely different on Switch, but that's okay. As long as the users and the players are uh, happy, then that's what we need, right? So, uh, so that is also the reason why um, before you start working on it, you have a clear understanding what the uh, what the studio wants, what they want to reach in terms of um, uh, layout, in terms of you know. Uh, in terms of what they want the end user to be playing in the end. So, and also, sometimes unpopular solutions can be, can be popular um, and, and, and moreover are acceptable because Switch players, they know that they won't have the same experience on the PC or on, on, on Xbox. So they are um, sometimes not, they don't even mind if they have, um, you know, just a simpler LOD or uh, a, a screen that is loading or, uh, yeah, I mean, this is something that is specific to uh, Switch players. Uh, I myself, for example, I, 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 I couple my Switch to the television. Uh, that is why sometimes I get so scared when I, sp when I play uh, FNAF. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't mind, for example, if it takes a bit longer or if it's like simpler layout than on, on traditional consoles. So, uh, some advice related to Unreal Engine. Uh, as we said, avoid hard references. Uh, again, I think this is really important. Uh, wherever you can, avoid the hard references. Also, ask the, the developer of the, um, of the save files. So this is very important for your QA team. Your QA team will say, hey, thank you, because they won't have to go hours and hours and hours to play uh, when they have to test only one specific level of the game. If you have the game files, then you can jump directly into the level that you have to test, and it will save hours and hours of work for the QA team. This is really, really important. OK, also. Uh, Oh yeah, my notes have disappeared. That's okay. <laughs> Blueprints. Blueprints is a technology that is in Unreal Engine and also very, um, you know, memory uh, demanding. We resulted by translating those blueprints into C++ coding and put it in, into the into the code again. So and also avoid dynamic lightning because that is again something that is really really memory uh, eating and. Um, and yeah, so, uh, I mean, what was the result of all this? So we had actually a very, very good relationship with Steel Wool and Devoted. And in the end, they were really happy with, with what we did, with what we delivered in only seven months uh, of porting of the game. Again, with a team of 27 people. I mean, this is something that is it's a huge team, right? And um, not only were they happy, but also the, the, the reviews uh, were very, very positive of the game. Some 
they sa said it was actually looking even better on, on Switch than on, than on PC. Um, but, but yeah, so the most important thing here is that uh, the, the, um, the end user and the player had the same feeling of, a, you know, an aesthetic, uh, a stylish, and yet very scary game, even on Switch, uh, which is a very small console. So, um, so yeah, so once we finished the work, uh, on, uh, on the porting of FNAF. Uh, Steel and Devoted came back to us and asked us to do an, the optimization of PS4 as well. And, um, and yeah, and also um, uh, and Xbox One as well, as I think. And then actually, what would, so we did that also after that over a couple of months. And uh, now, as of today, we are working on a new challenge with them, still on the FNAF franchise. And we are porting the game actually to PS and VR and MetaQuest. Um, I don't want to be part of that QA team. <laughs> if there's any volunteers, please let me know because it will be very scary. So uh, don't count me in on that. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it has been a hell of an adventure. Um, we're looking forward to, to, the, to the meta uh, version of the game as well. Uh, and um, that said, I really would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, um, shoot away. <laughs> thank you very much, Kathleen. You're it's welcome. It's been a very nice experience. I definitely have a couple of questions for you about audio <laughs> <laughs> optimization. <laughs> but unfortunately, we don't have time for questions from the audience. Yeah. Uh, we already well, you need can to find me. I'm, I'm here tomorrow. I'm here all day. You can find me. Yeah, you can also sure. find me on social media, whatever. I think I'm the easiest person to find on the internet. So yeah, just approach <laughs> Kathleen in the corridors. So thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.